Hey guys. Okay, so for today's video, we're doing something a little different. I'm going to be going through how I use iMovie, how I create new projects, how I edit my videos, and then how I post them all the way through. I'll go through all the little steps that I use to create my YouTube videos. So just as a heads up, I know I said the video is different than my other videos. This video is a little longer as well. So if that is the kind of video that you want to watch, where you want to learn how to make YouTube videos, keep watching. Otherwise, I will be back next video with more arts and crafts. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and we're going to start from scratch with a video that I have or will be working on and will be posting in the next week. So the first thing you want to do is open iMovie. These are all my projects that I'm working on currently. So you want to create a new project, create a new movie. Okay, so now we can drag and drop our videos into our project. Click on the first one and then I hold shift click on the last one and that highlights all of them. And then I just drag them into iMovie. When you drag it, you wanna wait for a green arrow to pop up. It might take a second depending on how slow. So you'll see that highlight and there's a little green arrow right there by the um, pointer. So I'm dropping that into the iMovie project, okay. So now I have all of my videos that I recorded. You can see it's an hour and 50 minutes of footage and I actually have a couple more videos that I'm going to add to the end. So that's typically what I start with around two hours of footage or two and a half hours and I edit that down to 10 minutes. So you can see down here where all the videos are there is this little li yellow line and that is the tracker so that helps you view the video. So to play through your video clips you can use the space bar to hit play and then the space bar again to pause. So I'm going to hit the space bar right now to play the video. And then I can hit the space bar again to pause it. Um, you'll notice that the video only plays at the portion of the clip that I have this uh, little tracker over. So I can move the tracker over, say over here to this portion of the video. And then if I hit space bar on that, it'll play at this location. And then I hit space again and it paused it. So these are all the clips. They all look small, but I can zoom in on them just using on my mouse pad, like a zoom motion, just like an iPhone. Uh, so I'm going to zoom in right here. So maybe at the beginning of the video, I'm not talking so much, but then I start talking. So I want to get rid of that beginning portion of the clip, but keep the other part where I start talking. Okay, so I find the location where I want to begin, and I hover over, and then I right click. I click split clip. Now this will split the clip into two separate clips. And the idea is I can delete the portion that I don't want. So now I wanna click on this first portion and hit delete on my keyboard. So now I get rid of that. And now when I hit play, which is the space bar on my keyboard, I'll start right from when I start talking. Okay, so that's my intro. Um, and we have that down and I just hit space to pause again. Basically, you want to use that split clip functionality to edit out any portions of your video that you don't like, anything that you, where you made a mistake, things like that. I'm going to split this here so I can show you some editing techniques that I like to use on certain clips. So if there's something that I want to emphasize in my video, I might use the cropping functionality. Okay, so there's fit, crop to fill, and Ken Burns. If I select fit, fit just shows the whole video clip. So you'll see everything in the scene, that's everything in your video. So if I select crop to fill, I can crop uh, the video so that only a certain portion of the video will be shown, but the camera won't move. So I can crop and do like this part, right? And then I'll hit, let me move myself out of the way. Okay. Then I'll hit this little check button. Like, yes, that's the right location. And now you see it zoomed in. And then when you notice when I go to the next clip, it zooms back out. So you can use this functionality to emphasize a part of your video, basically. I noticed that this wasn't exactly centered. So the other thing you can do is wait for this yellow line and wait for that yellow line, and that will be exactly centered in the video. So the third option for cropping is called Ken Burns. For Ken Burns, the concept is you have two different crops. You have a starting crop and you have an ending crop. So the way I have it set up right now, I have a big start crop and then my ending crop will be focused on my elbow. So if I click check and say that's okay, and then I hover over over here, 
Now, as I go through this clip, you'll notice I'm zooming in on my elbow. And that's basically it for Ken Burns. It's really just moving between two different cropping locations. So now we're going to move on to audio. If you find that a certain portion of your video is a little quieter than the rest, generally you want every clip in your video to be the same volume, right? So if, say, I'm talking quieter in this clip right here, say I'm talking quieter, I can highlight with yellow and then I can drag this little button and increase the volume. So now you'll see over here, the volume line over here, these little bumps, that changes as I move this. So generally you want your lines to be these little humps or these little mountains to be the same general size, I guess, uh, compared to your other videos, just because the listener wants to hear the same volume throughout the whole video. Uh, so sometimes I will adjust for the difference in volume if I am speaking quieter or maybe I was further from the mic or something like that. So that is an option that's available. I don't typically use this auto um, correction just because I feel like it makes my voice sound very tinny, but that is also another option. It kind of, it tries to like maximize your voice while getting rid of background noise. I don't really like it, but it is something that's an option. So then the second thing that I use a lot is the speed button. So this allows you to make your clip that you have highlighted either faster or slower. So right now the speed is on normal, but you can slow it down, you can make it faster, you can add a freeze frame, which means one frame of the video will be frozen, um, or you can do a custom speed, which is either slow or fast, just depending on, it's just not the presets. So if I click slow, I can do 10% of the speed, I can do 25% of the speed, 50% or an automatic. So say I click 10%, now I'm gonna be really slow. Okay. And then the same for the fast. That's the opposite. I'll be really fast. And this is used, it depends when you want to really use this. Maybe you're doing like, uh, for me, sometimes I'm painting something and I just want to get through it quickly. So I'll speed it up for people so it doesn't get boring watching me paint the same thing. Um, but it really depends what you want to use that for. And this is it sped up. So for the sped up version, it actually sounds like a chipmunk. What you can do is click this preserve pitch button and that will make it sound less like a chipmunk, I guess. So that's more my like voice, but it's just sped up. Um, and the other option you can do is reverse the clip. And that makes it go backwards. Sometimes you wanna do that, not usually with talking though. And that is about it for the speed functionality of what I use personally. Another option that you might want to use is this right here. So this is the clip filter and audio effects. And I use this sometimes if I want to emphasize certain portions of my video. Um, so there's the clip filter, which gives you different filter effects like an Instagram over your video. I only do that usually on certain portions of, of clips. If I want to do like a flashback, I'll do like a grainy film effect. So these are the different effects. If I hover over, one of these squares. Let me just give it a second to load. Okay, so now you can see for this clip, it pops up over here with what the filter option is. Moving on to the next section, if you'd like to add text to your screen, you can do that. Okay, so I click titles and then now there's all different words options um, and you can drag. So I select one of these and drag it onto my video. So the text over here, this will only show up in the portion of the video that that purple is covering. And I can use this little dragging thing to drag it back. Say I want it to pop up right here and I want it to end right there. Sometimes this is not enough for me. Sometimes I just don't like the way this looks or it's not in the right location. Uh, so my text, I can put whatever I want, but um, sometimes that's just not in the right location for me and I don't like it. I don't like the way the font looks or whatever it is. Um, and that's fine. So what I use is something called Canva um, and I create text in there as well and I'll show you that. So there's this website called Canva and it's free 
to use. There is a premium version, but you can also use the free version. So I like to use Canva for two different things. I like to use it for text and images in my iMovie, but I also like to use it to create my YouTube thumbnails. I use Canva in conjunction with a couple of other websites to create my thumbnails. So I can create a, probably a whole nother video about just how I make my thumbnails if you guys are interested in that. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to click on the YouTube thumbnail and create a new project with that. And then we can create some text and images that we can bring into our iMovie project. So let's click this. So, I mean, this is pretty user friendly, but what I like to use here is the text portion. Uh, so then you can create your text over here, add a heading, and then you can just change the different font sizes and move it to different locations in the screen. So if you pretend that this is your video screen, this whole square, now I can add my text to whatever portion of the video that I want. So say I want it over here, or maybe I want it up in the top left corner, okay. So say I want it at the top left corner, and then say I want to change this to whatever font that I want. And this has so many different fonts, you know. Say I want to do this font, and I want to make it a certain color. I have all those options here where I don't really have those options in iMovie with a text, um, with that those text presets. So, and let me add an element as well because that will be an image and that will show you that you can also add images into iMovie. Okay, so say I want to add this picture to it and maybe I want that to be on this corner over here. Now when I go to download this image, it's really a PNG you want to download it as, so I hit download. And I want to select transparent background because that will make this not white, it will make it just see-through so that I can see my video underneath and then I hit download. So I have this downloaded now as a PNG and I can drag and drop this PNG image into my iMovie project and put it on top of a video clip for however long I want in whatever location I want. So say I wanna put it right here and this is technically bringing in an image. So it can be any image you want, it can have text, it can have pictures, it can be anything you want. Okay, so now you'll notice that this is moving. So if I hit play here, ready, I'm going to hit play. You'll notice that at, when I drag it in, that's moving right there. And maybe I don't want that moving. So what I can do is double click this image and I can edit the settings of the image. If we go to our cropping tool, you'll notice that it was moving before and that's because it's on Ken Burns. So what you want to do is select fit instead and select check. For some reason, images by default in iMovie will be on that Ken Burns option and it will be moving with a zoom. So now it won't move. So then I can drag this over here and fill the whole clip. So there's something called a cutaway, a green, blue screen, split screen, and picture in picture. So right now a cutaway would be just the whole thing on top of it. So if this picture had a white background, you wouldn't be able to see me. It would be a cut away to just that picture. But since this is transparent, you can still see me through it. Typically with this, I would probably select a cutaway just because it makes it a little bit bigger. Um, I'll show you something that I would use a picture in a picture option for in a second. So now I have my text and my image right on top. It's as a PNG, or I can use this preset text within iMovie. And then the last type of image I'll show you right now. Let me see if I can find it in my downloads. So this is a thumbnail. This cutaway option will not show anything underneath, right? And it's zooming, of course, because it's by default an image. So we'll change that to fit. And then say I only wanted this in the corner. Then I would select picture in picture. And I would be able to drag this around and make this larger and smaller. But if I select cutaway like before, it will go to the whole screen and I won't be able to see my video for this portion, but I'll be able to hear it. So those are just two options that you can have with images. Uh, the other option I can do is I can do a split screen between the two images where I can have one on the left and one on the right. I don't really like that unless it's co the correct size. Um, I think I did that in my video where I read episode. <laughs> The, the app episode I had on the left side, my iPhone on the right side, my picture. And then this green, green blue screen, I don't usually use because it doesn't come out how I want it usually. It just gets rid of certain colors. 
The last thing that I like to do as far as dragging in outside things into my iMovie file is I like to drag in sometimes either music or sound effects. So I have a couple in my downloads that I like to use. Um, so say it's just a song, we have this song, we can drag it in. You see it has that little ad and there it is. Okay, so I've dragged it in. So the location that it is right now, it's actually just at the bottom. It's not attached to any clip or you can drag it a little further up and attach it to the clip. See that little green line right here? That means it's attached to the clip. So like I was saying before, if I select this clip and then hit delete, since this little line right here, I don't know if you can see, see this little blue line right here? That's attached. And then right here, this little green line is attached to this clip. So if I delete this clip, I'm gonna delete it just to show you, all of that got deleted because it was attached to the thing. So now I can hit Command Z to undo that. Command Z, that's undo on your keyboard. Um, but yeah, so I have my audio now attached. That's basically just if you wanna have a song. You notice that that song is very loud and I showed you that you can adjust the audio by dragging this and lowering it. So now I have the song a little quieter. And that is pretty much it for how I edit and use iMovie. So when I'm all done with editing and I've edited all my clips together, you wanna save it. So one thing you can do if, if you're not done with your video to save it, if you back out of the projects, something will pop up and it will say name your iMovie. So I can do, let's just name it test. So now my project has been saved and it's gonna show my library screen. So now say it's been like a day and I wanna work on my project again. Now I can double click right here on my project called test and open it back up and say I've been editing for a while and it's finished, I wanna upload it to YouTube. I can actually upload directly from iMovie to YouTube. So what you do is you click File, you click Share, and you have a couple different options. You can do it as a file, but what I like to do is click the YouTube option. It will have you log into your YouTube through iMovie, and you can directly upload from iMovie to your YouTube channel. And this is just a little faster for me because if you save it as a file, then you're gonna have to wait all that time to save it as a file to your computer. And then you're gonna have to go to YouTube and then wait all that time again to upload. This is more just a streamlined uploading it directly to YouTube. So then I name it whatever I want, my video, and I can put a description, I can put my tags in, I can choose the resolution, all those different things, make it private, make it public, whatever I want. And then I hit next, I hit publish. And that's it for posting videos directly. I'm not gonna do it because this is not a completed video. Um, so I hope you liked this tutorial of how I use iMovie, how I edit in iMovie, and how you can start using iMovie to create your own videos. Let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, so that is the end of the video, guys. I hope this was helpful for you for learning how I create YouTube videos using iMovie and how you yourselves can create videos in iMovie if you have a Mac. Um, so in summary, we just went over how to create a new project in iMovie, how to drag your videos into your movie, how to select certain portions and clips of your videos, how to split clips in half, how to highlight the clips and delete them using the delete button on your keyboard, how to play through clips using the space bar to start and pause the videos, um, how to crop the different portions of your videos uh, using the crop functionality. You can use the fit to screen, crop to fill, or the Ken Burns to zoom in and out. I showed you how to adjust your audio, how to drag in music or different sound effects, and also adjust the volume of that. I showed you how to speed up and slow down clips, how to put different filters on them if you want to do different like Instagram type filters on top of your videos. And you can also do audio effects on top of your videos. Um, I showed you how to put text on top of your video, um, or you can use canva.com to create your own text and images to put on top of your videos. I also showed you how to drag images into iMovie. I also showed you how to save your videos and publish them to YouTube from iMovie directly. So that is about it for how I edit videos in iMovie and publish them to YouTube. And I hope that that was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments if you decide to start making YouTube videos using iMovie. Bye guys.